Hey there YouTube, how's it going? Tails first here, and today I bring you an iBook G3 clamshell uh, running running Windows 10. Uh, it may seem a little funky, um, but yeah, let me just show you around real quick here. So we've got Telegram, we've got Team Fortress 2, which is actually there, but I can't run that on this particular machine. Um, and we've got YouTube here, and Google Chrome. And then we've also got just like kind of like just to say it, you know, Windows 10 there. And before I even continue, I want you to try and guess how I'm, it is that I'm doing this um, on this machine. If you can write in the comment section below before continuing, write in the comment section below and see if you can figure out how it is that I'm doing this. So let's go ahead and go over to YouTube real quick. The, one of the most popular number one trending things at the given moment is the YouTube Rewind Ultimate 2016 um, video. I haven't even watched this yet, so I'm only going to watch like the first few seconds. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, maybe you might want to stop this for just a moment, but I'll, I'll watch this for a second. All right. So that's just the beginning of that. Um, but yeah, you can. I can also go to like my all my other YouTube stuff and everything like that straight from here, which is really cool. And then we can also give me just a moment. Whoa! There's a problem with a drive. We don't want to scan that. And then let's go on down. Oh. Drop that. Jeez, I just did something there. All right, so let's go ahead and go over to our drive. Let's go to, where's the music folder at? I just put it in here. There we go. And then let's play some music. Uh-oh. So we got music, and we got a full web browser. Now games aren't really all that great on this on this particular setup here. Um, we've got our sound, we've got our Wi-Fi over here. So again, if anybody has any idea on how it is that I'm doing this before they watch the rest of this, um, just let me let me know down in the comment section below if you could figure it out. And I'll give you about five seconds to pause it real quick. No? Okay, cool. So we're, we're done there. So I want to explain now how it is that I'm doing this. So obviously, this is a G3 processor. Windows 10 is not going to run on this unless there is a PPC version of it out there that I don't know about. Um, and there isn't to my knowledge. But this also only has 162 or so megabytes of RAM in it. So, or was it 180 something? It's, it's, a, it's 100 something megabytes of RAM, which is nowhere near enough to run Windows 10. Um, it's also single core and it's only 300 megahertz, which might be enough for Windows XP and maybe Windows 7 you, to just get by running the OS. But other than that, you would need something much more powerful for sure. So how is it that I'm doing this? Well, if you go back to the uh, little window over here. Oh, that's not the right one. There it is. So this is running Windows 10, but you notice this little Dell thing over here. Or maybe you don't. No, there's Dell right there. And that's because the computer that's actually running that is right down here, this guy. This is a Dell E1705, one of my favorite laptops. Uh, I've had it for probably about the f past four years. It's 10, oh geez, this camera holder. Hold on a second. There we go, guys, I think I got it now. So this computer basically runs Windows on it. Uh, this, this laptop has a screen resolution of uh, 8, 1920 by 1200, which is a little different than the regular 1080. Um, but I scaled this down to 800 by 600 on this machine, so I can VNC, if you've ever heard of that program, I can VNC into this machine from the Macintosh and pretty much emulate a computer. Now, it's not really emulating it, it's sending all of that information over an LAN cable, which is over here, because I don't have wireless on this machine just yet. 
Um, but it sends all that data over this cable to this machine. So pretty much the Dell is doing all the work and this is basically just being a, a client or a screen. But it sends all the commands from the keyboard here and the mouse to that computer over there. So that way I can actually do pretty much anything of today on this machine. And once I get the wireless card in there, I'll be able to do it all wirelessly. And at this moment, I don't have a battery in this either. So how I've done this here, let me close this out. Uh, it took me a while to find this. So here we go. We're back in Mac OS 9 here. And uh, all I have is this thing called Mac VNC, which is sitting over here. This took a while to find. I, it took me like a uh, about two days of searching on Google to find this particular application on um, I forget the website's name and I you know what I'll leave it in the the, the the video description down below where it is that I found this and I'll leave a link to it as well if you would like to try this as well and then on the the machine over here the Dell I threw uh, tight VNC on there and then when you're running it you just hover over it in the bottom corner on Windows actually let me go back to uh, my Mac VNC thing here So here's our uh, here's our thing here, and if you go over to here, you can see Mac VN or Type VNC running, and you can see the IP address right here, which is you guys won't be able to do anything with this, so I don't have to worry about this. But it says 192.168.137.1 on on the Dell, which is what this screen is. Then what I would do is I would go over to my VNC, which is this guy. Oh, it's already open. Let me close it real quick. So if I go to Mac VNC and I'll type in that IP address to this thing here and I'll, I'll be directly connected. This can't be done over the network, at least from what I can understand. But this has to be directly over your local area network. And then you type in your password that you'll set on your, your uh, computer, which I'm not going to type in again right now, but that's how you do it. And then it'll show up on the screen and then you would normally want to set your server computer, which is my Dell in this instance, to the same resolution as the monitor on here. And then once you pull it up, Once you pull it up, you want to hit the command key or the Apple key here and F to full screen it. And then you've got a full screen version of that computer on here. And it looks as though you're running uh, Windows 10 on your machine. And then you can run any Windows application on here as long as there's not a ton of motion. Like it doesn't do really well with video. Anything that's full motion all the time doesn't work that well. Um, but anything that you would like web browsing or maybe Twitter or Facebook or anything like that, you could do on here very easily. Um, and I don't think it takes that much CPU either. It basically sends like uncompressed JPEGs and stuff like that over the LAN cable to your computer here. So it doesn't take too much CPU. Um, I used to do this on older machines. Um, but yeah, and another thing you can do as well. Like this video is pretty much over now, but I, I just, I'm just really interested in this machine at the given moment. Uh, the, they also have this other internet browser out there called Classilla, which you can download easily just by looking up Classilla. And by launching that, we can go there real quick. So this is their new internet browser that's being updated, I believe, at this moment. It's still being updated to work on Macintosh. Now what they do is they use a an user agent to spoof that it's a flip phone. So it'll load all of the really easy to load websites um, on this browser, which will make it really easy for the 300 or so megahertz processor that's in this poor thing. So let's go ahead and go to Twitter real quick. So I type in twitter.com and it'll automatically go to mobile.twitter.com. And it's not as snazzy or anything like that as the regular uh, Twitter, um, but as you can see, it works. So now I'm on Twitter. I can check my, my profile. I can check uh, any mentions that may have been to uh, sent to me. I can click this button over here and I can go straight to uh, actually typing out a tweet, uh, which I'm not going to do at the given moment, but I could do that if I wanted to on this machine. Um, yeah, so that works. And then for music, while you're browsing the web, and you can do this at the same time, but I can just plug that right into the side, just a regular everyday USB stick there. And then I can go ahead and open it, and this is the exact same folder that I had open on the other machine. And I should, theoretically, be able to go right here. And for some reason it doesn't know what it is, but if you open it in QuickTime Player, it'll open right up. 
Oh, what's going on here? Alright, so it's not playing audio for some reason, and I don't really know why. And I've noticed that my bar here is gone, where I would normally adjust my volume. Let me see if I can do this. There we go. So it still plays music. And you can throw any amount of your MP3s on here. Obviously, you can't go to Pandora. I mean, you can go on it on your Dell over there, but I mean, like, localized stuff. You can still do stuff. You can go onto web, uh, websites. You can listen to your music. You can do your, like, I've got Microsoft Excel, PowerPoint, Word, and whatever Entourage is over there. Um, I've got my internet here. And there are tons of games that you can buy for this computer, or not buy, but uh, download for this game. Like, I think Quake 3 and all kinds of first-person shooters that would work perfectly on this machine. Um, yeah, so that's my Macintosh iBook G3. I got this guy for, oops, I shouldn't have done that, oh well. Um, I got this guy for 30 bucks, $30 from a, a resale shop. Uh, they were selling it for 40 and I didn't know if I was actually going to use it. I asked them if they could go any lower and they said, how about 30 And I said, sure. And I brought it home and I looked it up because I had no idea what it was actually worth and I was kind of worried that I had overpaid for it. And I found out that they're worth quite a bit more than $30 these days. So I, I kind of made out. And it also came along with, with the Apple Learning Series Teacher Productivity. So this computer probably was for a teacher. And it's prominent of that because there are no marks on this computer. There are no scratches, dings, or dents. It's still... And I've noticed a lot of people in their collections, they've got these, but the, uh, the CD drive cover is missing. And this one's still got it. Um... The battery is dead, unfortunately, but I do plan on getting a replacement for that. It worked when I first got it, and then after a day of using it, the battery just completely gave up and doesn't even register charging anymore, which kind of stinks. Um, I upgraded it from 64 megs of RAM to 192 or something like that, and I am getting a wireless card, the airport card, in the mail shortly. Um, and then inside of here, we've got uh, like Artmania, Macintosh... Uh, all this all this software for teachers, like even the grading software is right there. All of that stuff. I don't know if that's worth anything, but I do plan on keeping this to keep it with this machine here. It also came with this, which is the original, um, what is this, a manual? User's guide, which is full color on the inside. And they try to, how do I comfortably work comfortably? You got battery replacement here. Oh, they actually tell you how to uh, to put in the Wi-Fi card and everything right in there, and the memory. You don't see that these days for Macintoshes. Look at that; it even gives you the specs. Use PC one hundred. All of this information. Look at all this. Really cool stuff here. Look at this. This particular machine even came with iMovie. Uh, this one. See, this one actually shows you hooking up to a camera there, which is pretty cool. Um, this one, I believe, came with iMovie 1, uh, but they're they're talking about iMovie 2 in this one. But iMovie 1 is on here. Um, all kinds of stuff. Really neat stuff. And then uh, it also came with this cord here, which is pretty neat. It's got the uh, audio-visual cable stuff going on here. So we got composite that comes out of the... Uh, headphone port which is on the side here. It also has a Firewire 400 port, a USB 1.1 or uh, 1.0 port on the side. It's got 110 100 Ethernet right there which is what I'm using right now. It's also got a uh, what is that? Dial-up 56k modem over there. It's got a speaker here, single, it's just one there. CD drive at the given moment, no DVD drive. I do plan on trying to figure out a way to get a DVD drive in there. It shouldn't be too hard. Um, and I do also plan, I saw somebody else doing this. The, uh, I think his name was the iBook guy. He took the screen here apart, and behind this, there's a little piece of silver metal that you can remove, and it'll make this, this right here light up, and I really want to have that. Um, leave your comments in the comment section below to see whether or not I should do that, because I, I don't want to hurt the value of this computer, because I, I do at one point you know, plan on selling this. Macintoshes aren't really my thing, but I've always wanted to have one of these. And it just so happened that this particular one is in blue, which is my favorite color. So that was perfect. Um, I don't know. 
what do you guys think I should do with this thing? I, I don't want to get rid of it right now. I, I'm still having a whole bunch of fun doing the stuff I'm doing right with it right now. Uh, but yeah, leave comments in the comment section below. Thanks everyone so much for joining me today. I can't really think of anything else to talk about, so I'm going to go ahead and shut this guy down. Again, thanks everyone for joining me today. Hope you all have a good one. This is Tails First, signing off.